Hey, so what in the world are we doing on the channel reviewing your own whiskey? I'd be derelict in my duties if we didn't. Oh, it better be good. So you mentioned in the mm -hmm. intro, we are reviewing my whiskey, the Prideful Goat. Yeah. You'd be shocked at how many people or even viewers of the channel involved in the Facebook group that have no idea that I co-founded this brand. Your logo is right here. It's right there on the back. Uh, but oh. despite that fact and the fact that I've always been involved, uh, I, I did offer some media bottles to some of the other YouTube channels. And uh, one of them said, are, are you uh, like a brand rep for them now? Are they like one of the uh, and like I was like, Red Bull girls? Yeah, like I co-founded it. Like oh. I literally sent them a picture of the, the back label. Uh, but but yeah, so That's this okay. is this is my brand. Uh, and I am very excited about this. Yeah, uh, me too. Um, so the distillery, who is really an uh, independent bottler because we're a non-distiller non producer, mm -hmm. is uh, Giant Texas Distillery. Uh, formerly known as Gulf Coast Distillers. So do we age in Texas or are we bottling in Texas? Let's talk about that. So uh, the the particular this particular release is our eight year. Okay. And it is a limited edition. Right. So we only had total 218 cases of this. So this is not replacing the six. six. No, the six is still going to be on shelves. We still have it. That's a... uh, but we had a few uh, barrels, only a few uh, that turned eight years old. Okay. And so we have 218 cases is to go to uh, 10 states of Canada, two online retailers. So there's not, there's going to be some everywhere, but it's not going to be widely, widely available. Um, and the age on this is eight, but three of those years were in Texas. Okay. And so that's, that would make sense. That's what, what makes this based on what I was smelling. exciting because a lot of the times when you see these eight year age stated, what you end up getting is um, something that spent most of its life at MGP where it doesn't yeah. experience a whole lot of temperature change. Um, <clears throat> and so this is going to have a whole lot more bear character to it yeah. than, uh, than you would see from others. Uh, plus, uh, all of our releases are currently cash strained yeah. and non-chill filtered. Good and this one know. is 122.1 proof. So we have the saggy mm -hmm. up here, which fared very well with us last year. It did. It, uh, uh, it was in our top five. I don't think it, I think it may have been. I, I think it came in fifth. Four or five? Fourth or fifth place. Had it yeah. in four, but I think overall it ended up getting fifth, which still, I mean, it made it to the Super it Bowl. It made it to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, and so these are the same mash bill. Not necessarily. Okay. So uh, Sagamore spirits will blend together the 51% rye barrels with their 95% rye barrels. Got it. Ours are all 95% rye. Okay. So that also so, makes sense. And so there's there should be a little bit more rye spice and yeah. character uh, on ours. Uh, the SRP on ours is 94.99. Um, keep in mind the distillery does not control pricing. We've priced it so that it can go through the system and everybody can make a normal profit margin and you pay $94.99, but sometimes people mark things up, especially on limited editions. Mm -hmm. And we still bottle on a 750 ml. Um, so that's all the details. Now, the reason why we have this Agmore Spirits up here, Aaron alluded to it, uh, this got a lot of really yeah. positive press last year. Yeah. And when we did our blind of our rise of the year, this one, uh, of course, made it in the top five, but it was it finished in the lower level. Sure. And the feedback that we got was that it was just a little too light compared to the other behemoths that we had it paired against. Uh, but the Prideful Goat is higher in proof, and it's a little bit bolder on the palate. And so I am hoping that everybody who thought Sagamore's 8 uh, was stellar will taste this and think... It's got everything that the SAG-8 did and any flaws that you could find, find in it have been fixed in the Prideful Goat. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping. So well, I'll say this. I have nothing to do with the Prideful Goat. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, I also don't have a bottle and I'll be paying retail for it. <laughs> uh, I pay retail for my own bias. Uh, yeah, that. <laughs> so I have no experience, no bias here at all. And I will tell you right now. I kind of um, hope he doesn't like it, to be honest. Like, I think that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> 
It smells fantastic. I yeah, mean, let's, so, talk, let's talk nose. So, We're... clearly on the nose, you can tell that, you know, this, this is a lot more fruit. Mm hmm A lot less barrel. And I think that's probably coming from the fact that we've got three years in Texas. In Texas. Yeah. Uh, but, you, I mean, this... The, the barrel on this is significantly more apparent than the Sagamore 8, in my opinion. And then also the, the spice, um, that kind of wintergreen, you know, classic rye yeah. note is also more apparent, which I love, even though I do love low uh, low rye mash bills. But Yeah, I'm, of the high rye mash bills, I think the 95% MGP is the one that's most in my wheelhouse because it does have so many fruit characteristics mixed in. With the rice spice, um, so oh, wow. so on the nose, oh, um, I get a I get a, um, a what I would characterize it's a sweet flavor, yeah, uh, or sweet scent. It smells the way Big League Chew tastes to me. The prideful goat on actually on both of them, but especially on the prideful goat. Uh -huh. On the nose, uh, mix in with that sweet uh, bubblegum flavor. I can see I, I, so I get that on the finish, but I've already kind of skipped ahead. Yeah. So I do get that a little bit on the finish now that you say that. Yeah, um, I'm getting I'm getting the, the kind of the spearmint, minty nose. Get like a slight like like grapey big leak chew on the back end. Sometimes I get a grape, um, huh. and sometimes I get orange zest. I could see that. I'll, I'll stay, dude. Kudos to you. That's fantastic. It it's a, I think it's solid. That's it's a, very, very good. It's it's a it's a solid whiskey. Um, on the palate, I get the, um, the caramel on the front end. I get a little bit of an orange zest, maybe a great big link chew in the mid palate. I get clove nutmeg, a little bit of cinnamon, mm -hmm. wow. some spearmint. Um, and then on the, on, on the finish, I mean, it hangs around. It's not so filtered, so it's a little thicker on the palate. Mm. So you read my mind. Um... And I have no idea if, if Sagamore is or not, but that is, yeah, it is not chill filtered. But this did taste, maybe, maybe it's the proof. It's 111 versus, you said 122. 122.2. Um, it does taste a little thinner. Yeah. But, but that was, I think. That our, was our problem in the ride in, of the year. Yeah. So, head head. yeah. Man, this has so much explosion of flavors and it lingers. The nose is fantastic. The palate is amazing. The finish is strong. Man, you did a banger on this one, man. You want to hear something awesome? I didn't taste it until the morning of the release. Oh. And so a, a lot of people, you know, you don't you don't think about this, but like the time that it takes to get barrel samples and whatnot, like barrels change, especially mm. in the Texas heat. Um, and on the eight years, I actually was not the one that tasted these barrels when we were deciding to bottle them. Okay. Um, the head distiller tasted them, and um, my former uh, business partner, Christopher Hart, um, he was still with the brand and he tasted them and he authorized bottling this as a small batch limited edition, but I hadn't tasted it. And so I was a little bit nervous. So I got to the distillery early and I ran in and I was like, give me a Glen. I, let me taste it. And as soon as I tasted it, I was like, oh, thank goodness. Like this is actually really good whiskey. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a lot spicier than this had more. And it should be. Which I, I like. I suspect that there are some 51% rye barrels that are in their their, yeah. their blend, their batch. Right? This is a, just a little bit darker. It's not quite as lively. Uh, it's still stellar, but man, this it's, 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 if you like a spicy rye with, again, a, a decent amount of age on it, mm -hmm. um, that's going to be up your alley. Yeah. Um, so how would you rate it? Uh, probably like a 93. Okay. I am going to... It's fairly high for me. ...abstain from rating yeah. because it's my brand. And I don't want to give a number that sounds crazy. Mm -hmm. But I would say I'd probably be in that same range with you. Yeah. That's very, very good. Um, I would hope that, you know, enough people can access it to try it because it's definitely a very, very good bottle. Well, it's good that you said that. Uh, we are going to try to coordinate the release of this video with when these bottles release on Silbach and Bourbon Outfitter. Okay. And so if um, the the states that we, we, we know they're going to be widely available in Texas, um, we've got some going to 
New Mexico, uh, Arizona, um, Louisiana, and Kentucky. Mm. Uh, and we find out on the other states that we're in soon. Yeah. Um, and then if you're in one of those states, great. Um, if not, you can check out Berman Outfitter um, and Sealbach. And they have some there too, but not a ton. Uh, so if you're interested, head right over there. If one says that they're sold out, then go check the other. So let me ask you, because mm -hmm. I know that you didn't name this after my mother-in-law. <laughs> How did you guys come up with the name The Prideful Goat? Uh, I'm just kidding. I love my mother-in-law. Yes, that's true. But uh, <sighs> he and his wife have a uh, Your Mama Joke competition. That's right. And so it's, it's ongoing. Um, so, yeah, the, the funny story, I uh, was... I asked Christopher, I said, what parameters do you want to use? And he said, I want our label to look like an old world pub mm. in Ireland. Oh, okay. And uh, so I started researching old pub signs, and a lot of them were in Gaelic. Gotcha. And so I came up with a Gaelic name that was his last name and my last name. Oh. And uh, it sounded cool. And obviously there wasn't going to be an intellectual property issue. We could register the trademark. And so I called him and I said, hey, what do you think about this? And he goes, it sounds cool. What does it mean? And I was like, it's our last names. And he was like, yeah, that's, that's, that's real cool. Real cool. Great idea, Randy. Great yeah. idea. This is how Christopher gives feedback. It's like a negative feedback sandwich, right? Right. Like he's like, great idea. But um, do you know what the whiskey enthusiast community is going to do to us when they find out we name this whiskey after ourselves? Mm. And I was like, oh, yeah. Um, so... Scratch that idea. Right. And then, like, out of the, he, like, completely out of the blue, he's like, what about the prideful goat? And I said, and I quote, what about you been playing around on a hipster word generator? <laughs> because I'd used one, like, earlier in the week for something else that I was doing. And I was like, that sounds like random words that a hipster word generator would throw out. Yeah. And he's like, no, I just came up with it. I okay. swear, I just came up with it. And, um... So, so to this day, out there. he promises that he just came up with the name. I thought it sounded cool. Uh, mm -hmm. We had the goat designed before we had the label designed. And uh, the goat, if well, you look at him. It's greatest of all time, too. He you looks. Know, you guys you have some high aspirations there. Um, and the owner of the distillery has a, a, a uh, what's the car they call a goat? A, a GOT or whatever? A GTO. A GTO, yeah. Yeah, he has a GTO. Yeah, for the 60s? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that a bad of bone. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty sick. And so you put it all together, we got the prideful guy. Nice. Okay, well, you know, sorry that, for the rant. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Um, so we rated it. Let's give some whiskey away. Yeah, please. Let's do it. Um, let's do uh, this is your bottle. We didn't talk about this. Can I give away a sample? We can always give away my bottles. Okay, I all right. Too many all right. as well. We so. are going to give away a sample pack. Uh, so that you can do the side by side of the Prideful Goat eight year mm -hmm. um, next to the Sagmore eight year. By the way, I love Sagmore spirits. I love the brand. Fantastic. I love everything about never them. Never had one I didn't like. Um, so uh, never think that I'm saying something uh -huh. negative about no, them. No, delicious. Just, they are just, amazing. just different, right? Um, and so yeah. So if you like this content, and I hope that you did. And you want to support? You could always buy Prideful Goat. Uh, you could consider joining our Patreon. There's a link in the video description to find out what all we have to offer. And it's not just a donation. I challenge you to go check it out and think that it's not amazing because it's great. Uh, there's also merch opportunities. We make a lot of things that whiskey enthusiasts know that they need and some that you desperately need that you didn't know you needed. So head over to bourbonrealtalk.com to check that out. And also, my real estate company has been subsidizing this channel for years. I'm a residential real estate agent that operates in the Dallas and Houston metro area. And Aaron here is my lender. That's right. So I you can show him in, some love, too. Yeah, if you're looking for a house to purchase, obviously, if you're in the area, call Randy. But uh, if you're anywhere in Oklahoma, Texas, Florida, or Colorado, I can write loans in. So if you're looking to buy, let me uh, have an opportunity to earn your business. My link is down below, I think. Awesome. All right, well, we end every episode the same way, and that's this. If you woke up this morning and you're unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that we love you. We'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk. How do I introduce one whiskey? I'll let it. You do it. I don't know how to do the, like, the <laughs> Just use the same energy when you're making mom jokes. I'm not going to call your mom a prideful goat. <laughs> I feel weird because it's my whiskey, so anything right. I say sounds arrogant. No. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes. Hey, so what in the world are we doing on the channel reviewing your own whiskey? I'd be derelict in my duties if we didn't. Oh, it better be good. I like that. That's a good one. <laughs>